Hi, I'm Paul Yarrow at Point Blank Online. I currently work as a producer and songwriter for Books Music. I'm the creator of the Control Skin for Logic Pro, and I run a website, logiccafe.com for Logic Pro users. If you enjoy this tutorial, there's plenty more content like this at pointblankonline.net. You're watching Logic Tutorials. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to control effect plugins in Logic Pro by building a Chaos Style XY interface that you can use and record as a bus insert or a master effect in performance. A quick mention about the setup, I've got the arrangement in screen set 1 and an audio channel routed through to bus 1 which, which will be the effect channel. I need to create a new track here in the arrangement and make sure it's the aux channel for bus 1. On screen set 2 I've two environment windows open. The top one is the mixer and I'm going to create a new environment layer on the bottom and call it vector. So you've got to decide on what effects you want to use in the XY controller. For this demo I'm going to add a phaser and a delay to bus channel 1. But you can literally add whatever effects you like and, and as many as you like including third party audio units. In the vector environment layer, go to new and select fader, vector. You can resize this fader by dragging the corner. Go to New and select Monitor and then cable the vector into the monitor. And this will show us the data activity being sent by the vector. In the top environment window, I'm going to select the mixer and create another monitor in here. Now if I cable the AUX channel strip to the monitor, it will tell me exactly what's going on in this AUX strip. So if I open the phaser plugin and move the feedback fader, the monitor tells me exactly what is going on. So you can see at the front here we've got um, the F represents the fact that it's a fader that's moving. You've got the channel is 2. You've got the controller message which is 3. And then the last bit is the, is the actual um, data, numerical data of the, of the value that you've moved the fader. So from bottom to top of 0 to 1, 2, 7, etc. So the object is for us to make the data created in both these monitors match. Now you need to program the vector fader. Select it and you'll see various programming options in the parameters box on the left hand side. So you can see there it says style as vector and then vertical control. The channel is 1 that it's sending on automatically and the control number that it's sending is control 7. The horizontal the same control channel 1 and control 7. And for those of you who don't know control 7 is usually a volume control message. So I'm going to select unused control numbers from the drop down menu which aren't set to anything. So vertical can be control 20 and horizontal can be 21. Now if I move the mouse on the vector you can see the monitor CC20 and 21 being sent to, by the vector. So the vector is now programmed. So I'm going to make the vertical axis which is CC20 control the phaser feedback. To do this I add a transformer and a new monitor. The transformer is cabled between the two monitors so that we can see the input and the output. Rename the transformer vertical for reference. Now if I double click the transformer this window with various editable conditions appears. This looks more complicated than it actually is. The top row of conditions should reflect what the vector is sending, which we'd like to change, and the bottom set of conditions should reflect what we would like to change those conditions to, which in this case is the phaser feedback control. For a direct comparison, the status is the first part on the monitor display, 
the channel is the second, the data byte 1 is the control number, and the data byte 2 is the value. So basically all you do is copy the information from the monitors you've created. So starting with the top row, status equals control, channel equals 1, data byte 1 equals 20, and we leave data byte 2. Then in the bottom row, we fix the value to fader, fix the channel to 2, and fix data byte 1 to 3. Again, we leave data byte 2. Final thing to do is to isolate the vertical signal on this path. To do this, we click on Apply Operation and let non matching events pass through and we select apply operation and filter non-matching events. This will stop the horizontal access data coming through at all. So now if I click on the vector fader, you'll see that the messages coming from the fader are transformed by comparing the two monitors. Now if we navigate to the click and ports environment layer, we can plug the output of the vector output monitor into the sequencer input. Then if we return to the mixer, view the phaser again, and click the vector fader, we can see that the vertical axis now controls the phaser feedback. So that's the vertical control sorted, and to get the horizontal element to work, simply copy the vertical transformer, rename it to horizontal, and wire it to the first monitor. Open the horizontal transformer and change the data byte 1 to 21 as that's what the vector is sending on the horizontal axis. Move the fader on the plugin you'd like to control, here I'm choosing the output mix, then simply enter the values the phaser fader is sending, which should be in the top monitor. So now both values are controlled by the vector. To create an on off switch, go to New, Fader, I always use button 3, but any of the buttons will do. Copy and paste any of the transformers you've already made and rename it to button. Cable the button between the monitors and the transformer. With the button selected, rename it to on off. And change the control value in the parameters box from 7 to 22. That way the button message does not clash with anything else. Press the bypass button on the phaser plugin and take note of the fader values in the monitor. Then simply repeat the process we've had in the previous transformers by entering the corresponding values. Now when you press the button, the plugin is bypassed. I want the button to be an on-off rather than a bypass, thus pressing the button effectively enables the effect. And to do this we go back into the transformer and select use map for data byte 2 initialize it and then reverse it. Now when I press the button it effectively turns the effect on instead of by bypassing it and that's your full circuit built. Make a copy of the circuit you've made as this will act as a template controller for other effects. You can now reprogram your template to control the other plugins in the auxiliary channel strip by editing the conditions in the corresponding transformers. Here I've reprogrammed the template to control the tape delay, and if I click and move the mouse inside the vector, you can see that both of the plugins are being controlled simultaneously. Remember, you're not limited to using two plugins, you can keep repeating the process for as many plugins as you like. Recording a performance with the vector is simple. Select the auxiliary channel strip in the arrange page and press record as you would with an instrument.
have fun with this and try experimenting with more than two actions per template. You can also try reversing actions as we have done with the buttons. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach it online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.